And as we continue on Yankees Hot Stove, let's have a little bullpen conversation. Well, we knew that Mariano Rivera was done with the Yankees, retiring as the all-time saves leader at the end of last season. Jabba Chamberlain gone. Boone Logan, a three-year deal with the Rockies. So Rivera, obviously, Jack, we knew. Jabba, we were pretty sure about. How about the Logan deal? Bob, I think the Yankees liked Boone Logan. They liked what he was able to do for them. I don't think they liked him to the point that they were willing to commit that kind of money, the amount of money that the Rockies gave him, $16.5 million for three years. You look at what Logan did for the Yankees. He was a respectable to sometimes effective left-handed reliever, but $5.5 million for a guy who, the way the Yankees used him, he was a situational lefty. You have to be able to allocate your finances better than that. And we've seen time and again that smart organizations, they'll build that bullpen. Brian Cashman is working on that right now. You might not have your bullpen in place on December 20th, but just make sure you have it ready by April 1st. And I just don't think the Yankees are ready to invest that kind of money in Logan. This time, Jack's right. I mean, uh, <laughs> 100%? 100% yeah. right about Logan. I mean, the way that he was used in the last two years, he is going to break down. I mean, we saw evidence of it last year. And I think the Yankees made a smart move getting out early before the total breakdown occurred. I don't think he's going to – I mean, he's, a great, he's got great stuff. He's got a lot of talent, no doubt. But I don't know if he's going to live up to that contract in, in Colorado. Right. It just doesn't pay, you know, to, to spend $16.5 million for three years of Boone Logan. As, as good a job as he did in that role, you can find these guys. I mean, last year there was no indication the Yankees were going to get Sean Kelly in February. Nobody really made much of it. And he turned out he struck out 12 guys per nine. I mean, you can find these guys if you have confidence in your pro scouts. And I think the Yankees do. This is a land of opportunity this year in, uh, in spring training. If you come to spring training with a, a good arm, a live arm, you've got a chance to make that Yankee bullpen. All right, so let's talk about the bullpen because they will look for a closer, although David Robertson is certainly one uh, heavily considered option. But you look at some of the guys that are around, and guys, you can tell me if we need to either add or subtract players from this list, but David Robertson will be there, Preston Claiborne, David Huff, Sean Kelly, Cesar Cabral, a left-handed option, and Brett Marshall. And as you look at that, Bob, anybody you want to add or subtract there? Well, I did want to mention something about li after listening to Robertson. He really nailed it when he said he's got to learn to be more efficient like Rivera and, and keep down the number of pitches per appearance. Because, I mean, Rivera, this last year, his uh, pitches per plate appearance was under four, which is the lowest it's been in 10 years. I mean, he just made short work of hitters time and time again. There's more traffic on the bases when Robertson pitches, and he's got to learn how to contain that. I mean, what if the Yankees play three one-run one, one games in a row? Is he going to pitch in all three? I don't know about that. He's, a good, he's got a good stuff. He's got potentially great stuff, but he's still got to refine that. I still think it's Robertson's job to lose, even if the Yankees do bring in another guy who has closed, a Benoit type or something like that. But, Bob, when I look at that graphic and I answer the question that Bob never answered for you, I'm going to go with David Phelps. I'm going to throw David Phelps out there because Cashman has already said that he sees Phelps as a Ramiro Mendoza type guy, as somebody who could swing between starting and relieving. But when I think of Mendoza's best moments with the Yankees, those moments were as relief. And I think a guy like Phelps is so reliable, somebody who you know on a moment's notice can get you a spot start but more importantly three times a week when Joe Girardi needs a guy to get six seven eight outs Phelps can be that guy right you know and, and, and we're going to find out about some of these names that you might not have heard of very much I mean had we heard much about Preston Claiborne at this time last year he wasn't really in the mix and we've heard a lot about Mark Montgomery over the years expect them to give him a look down there you know any name that you see who's had any kind of success in the minor leagues for the Yankees who's there in spring training they're going to take a look at David Herndon maybe you know Jim Miller I mean guys who floated up and down in the big leagues if they hit on something a new pitch here and there or a few good weeks in spring training you know they'll get a shot as far as the lefty option though go ahead I was going to say one more thing one name you did not mention Tyler is Dylan Batantis I think mm -hmm. he's somewhere on the radar he may be in the outer limit the outer the outer range but I think that he has a shot he has one more minor league option it's, it's likely he's going to start the year in AAA but the Yankees love him and I don't think if anybody remembers in the last game that Andy Pettit threw uh, no not the last game that Andy Pettit threw in the last weekend in in, in, uh, in Houston Batantis had a two inning stint in which he struck out four and people were in the Yankee organization was saying that's the Batances that we know that we can develop. There's a shot for him there. There is a high upside, and they're hoping 2014 is that time. Isn't that the beauty of that fourth option, though, that he was granted? Because he's, he does have some things to clean up. He'll have one of those good outings, but he'll also have one where he strikes out three but walks three. The extra option was a great thing for the Yankees, for Batances. It's not such a great thing because he would have gotten an answer about his future. But I agree with Bob, and I'll go back to what I said about Axford earlier. When you have a guy with that kind of arm, you have to give him time. You have to give him time to figure it out. He's six foot eight. He's a big guy, a lot of movement. I think the re bullpen job, putting him in the bullpen the way the Yankees did it, smart move. All right, so as far as lefties, which is where I was going, Cabral is a guy that is a possibility. How about Vidal Nuno? 
Yeah, I, I think that's another possibility. I mean, the guy throws strikes. You know, you, you can't, and you see a lot of times, if you have take a starter, put him in that bullpen role, his stuff plays up a little bit. We see it a lot. Uh, I think he's definitely an option out there. And, of course, David Huff has more experience. He's another lefty who they have who could, who could you know, maybe get a chance in that role. Now, you like Nuno as a starter, but do you think he's better served going back to AAA here, Bob, or just well, you know, put him in that bullpen I mean, let him learn on the job? He's got a really small margin of error. I mean, he throws 88 miles an hour. I mean, he... It's a dangerous position being if you're a lefty and you cannot strike hitters out. You cannot get swings and misses off your fastball in Yankee Stadium. You're in trouble. So I like him, but I don't love him. I think he's a guy who you see as a bullpen guy. I think if Nuno becomes a starting option for the Yankees, then I think other things have gone wrong because I think he's down on the depth chart. The one thing they like about him is this guy comes in and throws strikes. He doesn't mess around. He barely throws 90 with his fastball, though, so a guy like Nuno should be down on your depth chart. You know, some of these names we're talking about for a team that is keeping at least a budget in mind would be a nice cheaper alternatives in the bullpen. I also think there are going to be some guys, Tyler, some veteran guys probably in January and maybe even early February that you could probably shake loose for some decent amount of money. Right, absolutely. And, and, and they, they could turn out to be just as good as the others. I mean, these are some of the more high-profile guys you see there. Um, but, you know, maybe you take a chance on, on a Jesse Crane, you know, who had some injury problems. Or, you know, K-Rod never seems to get much traction. He's had, gone through it before in New York. I don't know about the first three there. Um, they might be a little pricier, but... Uh, you know, there are not a lot of impressive names on that bullpen that jump out at you. They might just want to get a name, but I don't think you have to get a name. I think, like we've said, I think you can find these relievers. You just shake them out, you find someone. A terrible cliche coming up since we're talking bullpen. I'm going to throw a little curveball here. Eric O'Flaherty, he is a lockdown reliever, lefty for the Braves. He had Tommy John surgery in May. Remember how the Yankees went out and signed Ardsma ahead of time? If I were the Yankees, I'd sign O'Flaherty, and I would just wait until he was ready to pitch. I think this would be a smart move. Get out ahead. This guy, talking to McCann at his press conference, he talked about how this guy was tremendous. you got a budding controversy, though, because McCann wears 34 <laughs> out of respect for his buddy, Eric O'Flaherty. You might not want to ruffle those feathers. I don't know. Either. First come, first served, I think, in that case. And by the way, O'Flaherty is gonna, not going to be able to wear the number for a while anyway. He's going to have to rehab the arm. Well, you know, the list that we just had, I kind of like Benoit. I mean, he's in a position, he's coming off a terrific year, and he's now looking for a job. And Tyler's right, maybe come January, he's still out there on the unemployment line. The Yankees might be able to make a deal for him. They have to have some insurance in case Robertson can't handle it. Right now, there's no plan B in that bullpen. As a closer, it's Robertson or nobody else. And I think a guy like Benoit, who you could bring in maybe for the eighth inning, would serve as a stand-in in case, you know, Robertson suffers from a case of jitters.